Hello everyone, I'm Takao Ito in Tokyo Medical University. First of all, I'd like to express my sincere gratitude to all organizing committee, in particular my dear friends James, Philip, Anthony, for giving me this wonderful opportunity. In this lecture, I'd like to talk on use guided gastroenterostomy. As you can see the slide, nowadays there are several therapies of gastroenterostomy. Of these therapies, recently used guided gastrogenostomy, gastroenterostomy is emerging. Until now, six techniques for USGE have been proposed. Traditional downstream method, rendezvous method, retrograde gastroenterostomy, e pass direct method, and west. Thus, so far, there is no established technique. Next, I'd like to introduce one by one. First, traditional downstream method. Step 1. An endoscope is performed to place a guide wire in the proximal jejunum past the obstruction. The endoscope is withdrawn, leaving the guide wire in the jejunum. Step 2. Under fluoroscopic control, a large dilating balloon is advanced over this wire to the jejunum. Step 3. Use guided 19 gauge needle puncture of the balloon is performed from the stomach. Step 4. A new guide wire is passed downstream into the jejunum through this 19 gauge needle. Step 5. Over this guide wire, the lamps is deployed, creating a gastroenterostomy. Next, rendezvous method. After needle puncture described previously up to step 3, step 4, instead of passing a guide wire downstream into the jejunum, the puncturing the guide wire is trapped in the dilating balloon that was punctured, or an ERCP extraction balloon on and the basket and pull back through the duodenal obstruction out of the mouth, securing it. Step 5. The lamp is then deployed over the gui this guide wire under traction. Next, retrograde enterogastrostomy. Up to step 4, the procedure is the same as random method then. Step 5. A therapeutic endoscope is now advanced over the guide wire, transversing the obstruction to the point of duodenal jejunum insertion of the guide wire. Step 6. The lamp is deployed from the jejunum. Next, EPAS. EPAS includes two techniques, namely one step and two step. In other words, freehand and over the wire stent placement technique. Since one step method is more effective without failed case, we use frequently freehand technique now. I'd like to introduce the EPAS method. Step one, an endoscope or a barrel endoscope, if possible, with overtube is used to place a guide wire in the proximal jejunum. Step 2. The balloon endoscope is withdrawn, leaving the overtube and guide wire in place. Step 3. A novel or balloon occlusion catheter is passed over the guide wire and two balloons and the uh, approximately 20 cm apart are inflated to fix a segment of duodenum and jejunum which is filled with contrast material and methylene blue. Step 4. An U.S. guided puncture of this portion of the small boil is performed between these two balloons. Step 5. The lamp is deployed. Next, direct method. 
step one, the duodenum and jejunum are filled with contrast material and mesen blue. Step two, use guided needle puncture of the jejunum without need for dilating balloon is performed. Step three, mesen blue is spreaded, confirming the needle is in the jejunum. Step 4. The lamp is deployed without a guide wire. Last technique is West technique. Step 1. An endoscope is performed uh, to place a guide wire and a nasal catheter in the proximal jejunum past the uh, obstruction. The endoscope is withdrawn, leaving the nasal jejunum catheter in the jejunum. The duodenum and jejunum are filled with contrast material and the mesen blue from the nasal jejunal catheter. Step 3. Subsequent U.S. transgastric identification of the distended loop by visualization of both the catheter and the fluid cavitation during injection. Step 4. The lamps is deployed without a guide wire. Here you can see the advantage and the disadvantage of each USGE technique. So traditional downstream ad uh, the technique, uh, the advantage is uh, easy needle puncture, but uh, disadvantage is uh, difficult tract tract direction stent placement and the delivery difficulty uh, system insertion. And the land technique. Uh, is easy needle puncture and idea uh, guide wire uh, tension is a big advantage, but uh, uh, complicated procedure difficult deploying the distal flange uh, disadvantage point. Regarding enterogastrostomy, uh, easy needle puncture and idea guide wire tension are also a uh, nice advantage, but a uh, complicated procedure difficult to uh, of um, endoscope insertion by a stenosis uh, uh, disadvantage. EPAS uh, uh, has a easy delivery system insertion and possible adding water by a tube if necessary. But the, no, the balloon is not commercially available and the uh, Tube insertion or may be uh, difficult in some cases and a complicated procedure. In terms of dialect uh, technique, uh, simple looks a simple technique, but difficulty uh, there by system insertion due to non distended jejunum. If if the the liquid is is injected, the last. Uh, but not least, uh, West technique is simple and the possible adding water by a catheter. But the difficult uh, difficulty of uh, the delivery system insertion in case of uh, difficult to distend the jejunum, not always successful. So, what is the best technique? I cannot say it because I have performed only EPERS until now. But I can say here, despite of various techniques, in order to successfully USGE, there are two uh, important point, important factors. As you can see here, one is distended jejunum for smooth delivery system insertion, and the other is uh, the most cross, most cross jejunum position from the stomach. In terms of distended jejunum, distended jejunum makes ideal tension of the GI tract and sufficient increase of diameter of GI tract. In case of non-distended jejunum, the delivery system insertion looks not easy. However, uh, distended jejunum the delivery system insertion looks easy. Why we need descended jejunum? I think it is more preferable to advance a stent delivery system into the jejunum. 
I propose the double balance occlusion theory. Next, I'd like to show this theory using experimental study. Small amount of water in the plastic globe provides a lower tension than the larger amount of water. You can see the EOS imaging. In the non distended model, needle sisu couldn't penetrate the plastic globe. In contrast, in the distended model, it could easily do that without any stress. Another factor is that jejunum should be located at most close position from the stomach. One interesting study showed that the ideal median distance between jejunum and stomach for successful USGE was less than 9 mm. In this aspect, if in case of longer distance, Double balloon tube makes it possible to dilate the jejunum, leading the short distance between stomach and the jejunum. Next, I'd like to show an interesting case. Geography at previous hospital showed two long distance between stomach and jejunum. It suggests that ESGE using standard technique might be impossible. More than 4 cm or 5 cm. We expected that EPAS allowed the, uh, decreasing its distance thanks to balloon inflation. As you can see, small amount of serine did not enable to decrease uh, its distance even using uh, the double balloon. Double balloon inflation and a small amount of salary with contrast. The over uh, 3 cm or more between stomach and jejunum. So, we inject the theory more and more, totally 150 cc, then we could puncture from the closest position from the stomach. And uh, finally, ESG was completed without any complication. Like this. So, ladies and gentlemen, my conclusion. So far, there are six techniques in USGE. However, there is no established technique. In my personal opinion, if so, if possible, EPAS is much preferable. Otherwise, WASH technique is acceptable. Thank you very much. Thank you for your kind attention.